Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. This is a follow-up video to my intro to plasticity video I posted a couple weeks ago. So I would watch that one first if you're brand new to plasticity. And it kind of goes over like selection and navigation and some of the basics like that. And this one will just make a slightly more complicated, I suppose, um, sci-fi object. Uh, the Pixel Fondue Discord is going to be doing a kit bash project for everybody in the Discord so they could submit little sci-fi uh, models to the kit bash project that other people can download. So I'll include the link to the Discord here. The, the PF Discord has uh, thousands of like searchable quick tip videos for plasticity and Octane and Moto along with a bunch of other content and scenes and stuff. So check that out. Link in the Description if you aren't already a member. Okay, so let's get started with making something. Um, I've been playing Jedi Survivor, so I was thinking about maybe doing something Star Wars-y, and then I uh, started like watching some Death Stranding trailer videos. <laughs> I've already played it, but the second one, the trailers for the second one came out. And so I'm thinking about doing um, something like this, this little uh, blood-type machine where uh, Sam can make grenades out of his own blood. It's kind of cool. It's got a little animation to it, and maybe um, we could do the animation and, and modal later on. Let me just mute that. But yeah, I thought this this was kind of cool. Some little machine like this, and we can make the little test tube. And then this other shape is this is we'll, miss, we'll make it sort of standalone. It's pretty simple, and I think it's something you could do in a fairly short tutorial. So yeah, let's do this. Let's start by making um, one of these test tubes that we can then later replicate along the edges. And then we'll make the sort of uh, enclosure for it. And then maybe we'll go to Moto and, and rig it up for animation and, and do some quick materials in Octane as well. This is what we'll ultimately sort of end up with, this sort of you know radial array of, uh, of test tubes with blood in them with these kind of cool um, tubes in the middle here. Let me just set the focal length on that. And then if I, I pull out, there's this, this sort of layered set of this um, different pieces, right? So we've got, uh, well, that's just a wall I put in there, but we've got the metal backing that we're gonna make. And then we've got on top of that, this sort of frosted glass. And then um, there's gonna be a layer of just a, a light ring in there. And that, that's the only part I just did in Modo. And then there's sort of this glass casing over the whole thing. You can kind of see here, right that. And then um, on top of everything is this sort of smoke detector looking uh, chassis. And then, yeah, everything spins as well on the spinner here. So we can rotate these guys around like that. So that's what we're going to make. And then, uh, yeah, let's jump back into plasticity and get started. Okay, so here's our default plasticity scene. And let me just do a couple of things as we get started here. I'm going to switch the perspective slash ortho mode to perspective. This, if I, you can see me flipping back and forth here. This is the ortho mode. A lot of CAD programs operate like this. And I think if you work on this all day in a CAD program, you're used to it, it looks great to you. I come from Modo and Maya and, and programs like Blender and Cinema 4D, and I'm used to perspective. It just looks natural to me. This looks like the way it should be. So I like to work in this mode. Now there, there is a bit of an advantage apparently to the ortho mode. Like if I'm in perspective here and I, if I push my camera in too close, I get some clipping, you see some clipping going on there, where if I'm in ortho, I can zoom in way farther, apparently, which somebody pointed out in the comments of the last video. Um, so there's some advantages to it. It doesn't really matter. I like to work this way, so that's how I'm going to work. I also want to keep this somewhat real scale. So we're at meter scale here, right, up here in our grid. Um, we're creating these, you know, this device about this big with uh, test tubes, right? So we need to get down to more like centimeter scale. So I'm just going to click this down. 2.01 meters or down in you know, centimeter scale. And I'm gonna delete the default cube and I'm gonna go to Z. I'm just gonna click Z on the view cube up here. Go to the top view, um, view cube actually usable. I remember when they added this thing to Maya. <laughs> it's just, the, it's like the biggest joke ever, but um, it's actually kind of useful to be honest. So uh, there are keyboard shortcuts. Like if I press one, I'll go to Y. I think three is, um, uh, X and what's Z, is it seven or something? Seven is Z. Also, if you hold control, you can go to the you know bottom or negative X, the back, or negative Y, the left. So anyway, so there, you can use the keyboard shortcuts if you want to. Let's go to seven back to top, but I tend to like to use the view cube. Um, so let's just do a cylinder. So I'm just gonna click my cylinder tool here. I've got um, snapping on, so we'll snap to the center here and just drag out a radius. 
and click again. And holding Alt, I can go back to perspective view. Now it defaults to like a full meter height. Obviously we're making a test tube, so it's not a meter long. I'm just gonna type in some quick, uh, some numbers down here. So we'll do a radius of like, um, like a centimeter and a height of like maybe 12 centimeters or something like that. And that should be about right. Now, if you wanna center your object, like in, in Maya, you might press F to frame or in Moto A or Shift A. Um, you can use the little slash question mark key in, in plasticity and it'll frame your item there. This looks about right to me for a, for a test tube. Maybe it's a little long, but I think we're okay. And now let's get that sort of little cup at the bottom, that little rounded cup, and we can do the uh, use the fillet tool for that. So press two to go to edges, right? And then click that bottom edge. And then again, if you haven't watched the first video, um, the fillet tool is also a fillet slash chamfer tool. If I drag into the negative direction, I get this hard chamfer. And if I drag in the positive direction, I get this nice smooth rounded fillet. What I wanna do is get it kind of like this, right? But in order to just get that exact radius, I can always click on another fillet in the scene, or in this case, I can click on the radius of the cylinder and it'll just do it for me, right? So I just click on the side of the cylinder, it sees the radius of the cylinder, it makes it the radius of the fillet, and we get our perfect little rounded cup at the bottom. Okay, hit all right, and we've got a solid test tube, right? So obviously we need to hollow this thing out. Now, a lot of programs will have something like a, maybe called a shell tool or something like that that you can use. I'm gonna do a different technique here. And, um, but everybody, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of different ways to do things in 3D modeling, but this is how I'm gonna show you how to do it or how I thought I'd do it. Is I'm gonna go to the faces, so press three, so you're in face mode, I'm gonna select this bottom face and this, um, this sort of the cylinder face, just not the top one, right? And then I'm gonna press Shift D. Now again, like it's plasticity, so it just brings up whatever tool it thinks you might wanna use but that doesn't mean I can't just do the keyboard shortcut. I don't have to cancel out of this. I could just fire the, off the keyboard shortcut for, for a command if I want to, and Shift D is duplicate. So Shift D is gonna duplicate that, and because I had faces selected, it's duplicating the faces. Now I have these sheets, okay? So we'll just hit okay there, and I'll turn off our solid cylinder, and let's look at our sheets, right? They're hollow, so they're just 2D sheets, right? Sort of like paper folded over. And I want to thicken these. And there is a thicken tool. It's just down here, thicken a sheet. So I'm going to click that. I get this little tool handle and I can thicken my sheet, right? So I can thicken it either direction. I'm just going to thicken it up a little bit. I mean, it's, it's a test tube. It's not that thick. So something like this looks good. Hit OK. And voila, we have a test tube here, right? We just need to detail it out a little bit. And if you look at the Death Stranding image, it's got... Um, this little sort of metal ring here, which we'll make, and it's got this kind of fancy plastic cap. Uh, actually, these don't have that round, little rounded bottom, but that's okay, I like ours, we'll just keep it. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. Uh, so yeah, let's make that, um, this little ring here, then we'll do the cap. So we'll just jump back to plasticity. And there's a couple ways to do this. Again, there's a million ways to do everything in 3D modeling. So this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna look at it along the Y here and I'm gonna select my um, straight line, which is Shift A, or we could just click the icon. And I'm just gonna drag and click, and make a line right across the center there, then Shift D again for duplicate. And then I'm gonna, it brings up the move tool automatically after you duplicate it. It's gonna move it down a little bit, hit enter. In fact, I can shift click, um, go back, press two to get curves and shift click and select both curves and you could just move them together wherever you want them. Maybe like right here, enter to, to confirm. Now I'm gonna do an imprint and that is shift I, is the keyboard shortcut for imprint. We're imprinting these curves onto the surface. And so I already had the two curves selected. It's just asking for the target body. So I'll select um, the, uh, the cylinder there and hit okay. And you can see that it made these two edges there. So let's hide our two um, lines. In fact, I'm just gonna delete them. We don't need those anymore. But you can see it's added these two edges here, right? So that's pretty good. Now, I, the reason I did that, and I've got them on the inside as well. Um, the reason I did that is I wanted this face. I'm just gonna do the same thing I did earlier where I shift D to get a new face. And then I can just press R for, uh, or I'm sorry, not R, S for scale. And I can scale that 2D face out a little bit. So there's just a little bit of a gap between the face and, um, and the glass. Just so you don't want them really touching perfectly. You can create some refraction errors when rendering with the, with the glass if it's actually right 
but it perfectly in the exact same space as the metal. So you just want to make it a little bit, you know, there's obviously going to be a slight, you know, um, separation between the two. And then we'll just thicken this again like we did last time, clicking the thicken icon here. We'll just thicken it out. So we've got a nice little, you know, metal ring here. Hit OK. If you want it, you know, taller, you can just, you know, select the top face like this and grab them both. There will be a face on each side and uh, move it up and down like that if you want to. So we can, you know, whatever. This is fine for me. Hit OK. And I'll probably chamfer the edges just a little bit or bevel or uh, fillet them a little bit. So press two. In fact, let's do it this way. Let's um, select, hold shift, select both the top faces and both the bottom faces. So we have all four faces selected. And then control two will convert that to um, the boundary curves. And then I can just click and drag and, and get a bit of a Flay between both of them, right? So we're flaying all four of these at once, something like that. Hit OK, it looks good. And yeah, there's our little metal ring. Let me just take a second and organize my scene. You can see these these things still have the name sheet in them. They're, even though they're not sheets, they're underneath the solids. They're just taking the name from the sheets that we thickened, right? So and we still have our original, let me just hide these, our original sort of solid cylinder in here as well. We don't need that anymore, so I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to rename um, this face sheet to test tube, you just double click on it. And then I'll just double click this bottom one and call it test tube ring. Whoops, we'll just call it metal ring. Sometimes I like to put the name of the material in the item name so when I go and surface it um, later, I know, oh yeah, that's metal. So metal uh, ring. And then I'm going to hide the metal ring. And you know we've got these um, edges in here that we had, we had placed um, with our imprint curve. We don't really need them, so I'm just gonna press the backspace button to delete them. And uh, yeah, okay, so now we've got a ring, we got a test tube, let's make a cap. Okay, for the cap, we can do something similar like um, duplicating this top sheet and then, and then making the cap out of it. Um, but let's do something a little different. Let's make, uh, we haven't done a lot of surface modeling, so let's revolve something. So I'm gonna look at it from the side here. You could do X or Y, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to use my um, straight curve tool here and click from the middle, drag over. Maybe we'll do something like this. Come in a little bit, down a little bit, maybe a diagonal, and then back to the middle. Okay, hit enter. And now I've got a profile that we can revolve. And so I'm just going to go back. Actually, we can just stay in this view. Um, let's click to find the revolve uh, 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 icon down here at the bottom. And then we're just gonna define our axis by clicking and sort of dragging down and hit enter when done. And now we've got this sort of cap at the top, right? So we're just kind of gigantic, that's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll make some adjustments. And this is one of the issues I, I have with plasticity. Now, if I was in Moto, um, I would use mesh operations or if you're using Maya, you can, a similar thing where I can then adjust the curve profile and it's going to um, adjust the resulting surfaces live. There's a live link between the two. In plasticity, not the same way. So with this, this curve, I press one and adjust like the vertices. Let me just um, hit okay here. If I press one on the polyline and grab those vertices, and, and G for move and move them in, it's not adjusting that um, revolved surface for me, right? So what I have to do is I have to select my, my surface, delete it, select my, uh, press two, select my polyline again. Let me just kind of look at it from the side. Maybe just move it out just a little bit like, like this. And then um, grab these guys. Move it in just a little bit. Whoops, this bottom one too. Move it in just a little bit. And then I'm gonna actually grab these two uh, these two vertices and then B. And then I'm going to not chamfer, let's do the other direction. Let's get a nice little rounded edge like that, okay. And then, yeah, let's press two. We'll choose our polyline again. Whoops, let me just look at it from the side. We wanna get, um, these two verts back at zero. So press, uh, uh, we'll do them one at a time. Uh, G for move, hold control and just drag it in the middle. You can actually G for move and use that little arrow there. 
hold use control drag it in the middle okay same with this guy g for move hold control dragging the arrow to keep it on that um, x plane okay now they're both back snapped in the middle and we'll have a nice seamless surface when we revolve it so let's turn our uh, test tube back on here so two for curve select my curve select my re revolve button and i'm just going to whoops not extrude revolve not extrude Revolve, I'm gonna click here. I'm just gonna kind of drag down a little bit and hit enter. And now that's a probably a still a little still a little big, but we can we can adjust this by moving faces around, I think. For the cap, but something like this, and let's just um, hit okay. And then let's just uh, do a little more work on this. So I'm gonna hide my I'm gonna delete the polyline. I'm gonna hide um, the cap really quickly. And I'm going to select this top face, Shift D. Let me just actually Control Z, undo that. I don't want the face, I'm gonna select this top curve here, this top edge, Shift D, and it's gonna create a curve for me. I'm just gonna move that up a little bit like this, hit Enter, and then I'm gonna bring my, um, my test tube uh, revolved cap back on. In fact, let's just call this, um, click it, double click it, and call it cap can hide uh, the test tube for now. And I'm going to, just looking at the top, I'm gonna to select my curve, press C for cut, select my cap. You can see the sort of black outline there, it's cutting into it, hit okay. Now I've got two solids here. I've got the sort of the center core we just chopped out in the top. So I'm just going to hide my curve, have that center core selected, I'm gonna delete it. Whoops, here's the center core, delete that. Uh, rename this back, This guy here cap, there we go. And so something like this, and again, I'm just gonna press three and select this face. Let me turn my um, test tube back on. I'm gonna push it out just a just a tad, just to make a little bit, offset it out just a little bit so it's not intersecting that glass again. There's just a little bit of a gap there. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Now we, I can actually select this face and, and push it in a little bit. It's just a little chunky there like that and then let's just create some you know extra detail here on the side i think so i'm going to hide my um my tube and just press like three to look at a long x here i'm going to create a circle just click center circle here and it should sort of snap into the middle of our revolved cap here just click and drag out a circle enter and then i'm going to press s for scale and just make it more of an oval like this, enter, and then C for cut, click my surface, it'll cut into it, hit okay. So let's just click alt, just hold alt and click and drag and put us into this um, perspective view again. Let's take out our middle parts here, these two parts that we just chopped out, we'll just delete them. So we've got this hole through the middle and I can um, press two to select my curve and I'm gonna rotate it. Whoops, not extrude it, R for rotate using Moto shortcuts and Maya shortcuts instead of these sort of uh, blenderish plasticity shortcuts, R for rotate. Uh, now, I don't want to rotate it in the middle right here like this. I want to rotate it from the middle of the grid, right? So you'll notice when I press R for rotate, I've got this option here, pivot. So I can press V and then I can just define my own pivot, which is I want to put it right here in the center like that, right? And then now when I rotate it 90 degrees, I'm rotating from the center of the world and I'm gonna just type in 90 here to get it exact and enter. And now I've got it on this side, okay, which is also looking down Y, so I can press one and look down Y. And then again, the, the curve is selected, that circle is selected, so just C for cut and click our solid here, hit okay. We just chopped out a couple more, you know, solid pieces there. Can hide my circle and then those two solids are selected, I'm just gonna delete them. Now we have this kind of, you know, more interesting shape now, right? Turn our, um, uh, metal ring on and our test tube on and there we go. We got this kind of cool looking test tube thing, right? We got a metal ring. We got this kind of cool looking cap and we've got the you know hollowed out glass in the middle. They're not intersecting so we shouldn't get any refraction errors when rendering and uh, looking pretty good. So I'm just going to grab all these guys and control G for group and I'm going to just rename this group um, test tube. And I will move on to our main sort of uh, devicey sort of thing. It actually looks kind of looks like a smoke detector, <laughs> you know, right? But I think you know, we've got a, the back part, which is this sort of um, maybe it's like a clear plastic with some lights behind it, and then some text stenciled on it, which we'll do in texturing. 
And then we've got this, um, you know, the, it's all sort of encased in glass. And then there's this sort of outer plastic shell. So there's, you know, maybe three or four parts here that will do maybe like a back metal plate. And then the, the lights, which we can do in the 3D program, I suppose. Uh, but we'll do that sort of the, the plastic um, sort of pie sections for the lights and then sort of a glass cover and then the metal sort of uh, smoke detector looking chassis on top. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna hide this stuff in a second, but we'll just keep it on right now just to get our, our scale kind of right. And uh, yeah, so let's look down X and let's make the sort of back circular, sort of like a metal backing. Just a simple cylinder will do. We're just getting the overall scale for our, um, whatever you want to call it, smoke detector slash blood grenade maker. <laughs> So something like this, maybe, like I'm probably gonna have to rescale the test tubes at the end of the day, but let's just start with like this. So like a point, was that 0.3? And height, we'll do like um, 0.1 and hit, uh, we wanna do new body. We don't wanna Boolean it into existing um, geometry. Right now you see that red and it's, it's thinking it's gonna wanna subtract into existing geometry. We want a new body, so press B get a new body, hit okay, and here's our new body, the cylinder right here. You can see it, it's a little, little thick. We'll thin it up in a second here. So let's just grab, um, we can use the scale tool or I can just press three for face and grab that front face and just push it back, something like, we just want a thin, whoops, a, a thin like metal backing is all here. So something like that, that's the sort of overall size we're gonna be dealing with, hit okay there. Uh, I can hide this uh, group now. So I'll hide our test tubes. And then I'll just do some, just grab these two edges here. And let's do is just a nice little um, chamfer like this. Now, in, in, when we do a 3D rendering, we can do, we can always smooth out these hard edges um, with, with some edge rounding in the shader. So I think that's a really valuable thing to use. Especially, I do a lot of CAD file rendering, as a lot of pro uh, product rendering for my clients for my production company. Um, cat files tend to come in with a lot of just sharp edges, not a lot of 90 degree edges. And using that sort of edge rounding and octane or the moto renderer, or I suppose cycles or some, you know, whatever, Redshift probably has it as well. Uh, really like, you know, just smooths out those hard edges and adds nice little highlights there when, when the light hits it. So we'll do that in the, um, in the, in the, at the shading level, we'll put a little bit of a chamfer here, but you know, you gotta avoid the temptation to chamfer and, and fillet everything. Like it just adds a lot of <laughs> complexity and geometry to your scene, which you don't really need at the sort of millimeter level. Okay, anyway, we've got this back here. So let's just um, work on this uh, sort of lighting section here next that looks like, like this. And sort of this looks like some sort of like pie slices, although it doesn't look it looks like maybe there, there's a little line here. So it doesn't look like they're necessarily completely symmetrical. Maybe there's six of them and two of them are twice as big. Let me, let me show, show you what I mean. Um, let's just go back to plasticity and I'm going to grab this front face and shift D to create a, to create a sheet out of that. And I'm gonna move it forward just a, just a tad, just like, um, just like a, a millimeter or so, 0 0.02 millimeters or something like that, hit okay. Let's hide this back piece here, we'll call this um, uh, metal backing or something like that. And we can we can hide that, we don't really need that visible, but we have our sheet here. Let's, let's section this bad boy up into pie slices. So uh, I'm gonna look at it down the x-axis and I'm gonna go over here, shift A to my line tool. And I'm just gonna start in the middle where it snaps, click and go up and enter, and then again, I'm gonna click it again, and I'm gonna snap to the middle, and I'm gonna go out this way. You can see I've got an angle, you might not even be able to see, it's really faint, but there's like a really, there's a there's a length and an angle, you see that? And I can type this in by pressing tab, and going to the angle, and pressing 45. Now it just snaps to a 45 degree angle. Super, that, that's super awesome in my opinion, <laughs> to be able to do that. And just um, hit enter a couple times, and boom, we've got that at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna shift click the other line or control click the other line and press J for join. So now it's just one uh, curve, just boom, boom. Let me do this. Let me make um, a circle, just the circle, center circle tool, click and drag out, not quite halfway, maybe just like, like that, just eyeballing it, hit enter. And then I'm going to press C for cut. I'm gonna select my sheet and it's gonna cut that circle right in the middle. So now we've got two. 
right? So we've got um, this middle one here, and then we've got uh, the outer one there, right? So I'm gonna delete that circle curve. I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna hide that inner circle like that. And then I'm gonna select my, press two for, for curve, select my cutter curve, press C for cut, select that outer ring, that sort of donut sheet, and cut that, hit okay. Now I've got this slice. And I can delete these lines now. And then I'm going to press two or three, I'm sorry, for this face and select that, the majority, that big, you know, uh, larger donut section. Delete that. So I've just got this one now. All right, so let's turn our middle circle back on and just press Alt and go back to a sort of perspective mode here. Press three for face, or you can actually press five, which you see they're all lit up now, which means I could select any of these component types at once. Um, you can do either one. I'm used to just pressing one, two, three, like in Moto, but I'll just do three for face. Select both the faces, and we don't want to offset them. We want to extrude them. So there's a button down here, I'm sure, somewhere, extrude, or just press E and drag out. And we don't want them, right now they're they're blue, which means they're going to be unioned together. Actually, I want these separate. So I'm going to press, again, B for new body to keep these separate. Hit OK, and we've got two new solids here. Now, as usual, our, our sheets still exist in the scene, but we don't we don't need them anymore, so I'm going to delete them. Um, these two curves we don't need anymore. These two cutter curves that we used, um, we don't need those either. So let's delete those two guys. And so we've got these two new solids here. So I'm going to select um, this pie slice here, and I'm going to push this radial array button, and then kind of click in the middle of the circle. It'll snap there. And we want to go to um, eight. Now I've got eight little guys, just eight little pie slices around our center slice. Looks pretty good. So press four for bodies mode. Click this body, click this body, Q and Q again for union, hit okay. This one and this one, Q and Q again for union, okay. Whoops, Q, whoops. Now I've got uh, really just six of them. It's sort of asymmetrical, which, which you know, whatever, looks kind of cool. Um, let me just, I might hide that grid there for a second. And now I'm going to press two for the edges and I'm just gonna lasso every single edge. And it's gonna bring up the fillet tool, which is what I want. I'm just gonna drag out a tiny little fillet, like maybe 0.02 centimeters or two millimeters, I'm sorry, something like that, okay? So there's just a little bit of separation between them. And I can actually grab all these guys. Let's just actually right click on your um, material up here, render mode, and then select the white one, and then click show edges. I think it just shows a little better in white. You can see there's some separation there, right? Just real subtle separation. And this will show up nicely when rendered. It's glass, and so there's gonna be some different refraction going on at the edges there, that little fillet we put in. And it's gonna show some some nice separation in the render. And yeah, it's kind of like, it looks, you know, this is the, I'm trying to get this effect right here where you see this sort of like little separation here and, and here and here, right? Okay, so we've got that going on. We've got our, our sort of, you know, back lighting. I think I may actually scale all of these down just a little bit like that. Hit OK. Um, if you hold Shift and double click, you can rename them all at once. We'll just call these um, glass wedges or something like that and group them together and call this glass group. And we can turn on our uh, metal backing down here if we want. Whoops. Kind of see them both here. We'll just press four to select the uh, uh, metal backing. Let me just go look at it from the top. G for move. We'll just sort of butt it up against here. Not quite touching, but kind of like that. Okay, so we've got our back two layers going on. We just need. Um, like sort of a, a, a glass case that's sort of sandwiched between the, um, you know, this sort of back white layer and uh, the front of this, this sort of whatever smoke detector looking thing. I'm guessing that, you know, this, you know, these test tubes are actually encased in, in glass. So let's just have a sort of a glass torus in there or, or semi, I think maybe we'll keep the, the middle open yeah, we'll just it'll, we'll just play by ear here and just uh, 
you guys I'll just play it by ear a little bit. Basically, we're going to have, um, I'm just going to block in a quick mechanism in the middle. Just pressing the uh, cylinder button here and just snapping to the middle, dragging out a radius and, and forward a little bit. B for new body, enter. And so this is going to be sort of the mechanism that, you know, the, the middle that all the tubes are going to be connected to, sort of in a radial spokes, like coming out of that. And we'll just make it like, you know, maybe that, we'll just keep it like that thickness for now, maybe a little bit thicker. Those test tubes are kind of thick, something like this. And I'm actually going to make this another um, color or just different material so we, it stands out a little bit. Just hit, uh, uh, double click it and call this, um, call this, uh, call it, you know, spoke center or something like that. Let's call it, you know, whatever. S yeah, spoke center, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. We can right click and say add material and we'll just give it a color like a blue like this hit okay and something like that maybe not quite edit material maybe, maybe something a little bit lighter like that okay something like that just so it, it stands out from the back a little bit now if i want to make this back piece the same material i can actually um just just drag that little circle on there onto it now they're both that material so that's a pretty nice way of just sort of separating out different materials in your scenes you can see different items really quickly I'm going to, I think, do um, look at this from uh, the top. And I'm going to use my revolve tool again. So let's just start with a um, straight line. Let me turn on my, my grid. And I'm going to. So I'm going to I'll draw it out here, then I'll move it into position. I'm just going to draw a curve just straight out here, make it a little bit, you know, about the same same distance as the backing here, something like this, then just up a little bit, and then back in, like this, enter, press 1 for... Um, verts and I'm going to G for move and move these in a little bit like that. I'm going to select these two and B. I'm going to fillet these a little bit so it's a little bit nice and rounded. Enter and then I'm going to G. I'm going to two to select this and G to move it again and move it just above that. Enter. Let me just press one for verts and actually G for move and move the verts just a just slightly above this middle mechanism we're going to be building in the middle. Something like this. Yeah, something like that. Um, press 2 to select it. And then let's just go back to our perspective view here. And we're going to revolve this. So we need to like sort of slice, you know, sort of swipe the axis. We're going to revolve around and we're going to revolve around this um, X axis right here. See the red? So think of it like, you know, the red is, is you know, sort of the, the axis, the axle, and we're gonna, that, that yellow, we're gonna sweep around in a wheel around it. And so let's click um, Revolve, and we wanna just click on the X here and just drag down the X and click on the X here, just making that line, hit Enter, and we've got this, um, you know, this glass part now revolved around, right? Now, it's, let me just go ahead and hide the, um, the, that curve here. Whoops, bring the shape back on. And let me bring um, right click and bring um, edges back on. So you can kind of see, let me hide the uh, grid and kind of see what we're doing. Let's just, I wonder if I can make this semi-transparent. Before, actually before I do that, let me just, um, let's hide the glass group and let's, let's hide the, the two middle parts. Let's just look at this thing we're doing right here. So, you know, this is right now, it's just a sheet, right? It's not a, it's not a solid. You can see it's under the sheets heading right here. So we wanna make this a solid. So we can, of course, thicken it like we've been doing. So I'll just go ahead and um, select it and then click on thicken. And then we're just gonna drag a little bit. So we've got this sort of thickened piece of glass here, hit okay. And then our, our center circles here, I'm just gonna hold shift and select all four of them. Put a little bit of a, a fillet on there so it's nice and smooth. Okay, so this is just sort of a, you know, the, the glass container. We've got um, this mechanism that all the, uh, the sort of central hub. 
And then we've got the backing and then we've got the um, sort of glass panel group in there as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna rename our revolved, you know, sort of glass case here. We'll just call it like glass case. Sounds good, double click. Um, glass casing. And I, I don't know if plasticity can do transparent uh, materials yet in the viewport. Uh, right click and, and do a new material. Um, we can just make this like a like a really light blue, but I don't know if I adjust opacity if that's going to do anything. It doesn't look like it does. Uh, this looks like a PBR material, so actually transmission would would also you're transmitting light. That's normally what you'd have if you're doing a physically based render, but it doesn't seem to like either one of those. Does it? Can you see through it? I don't know that you can. Um, that's okay. We don't really even need it um, visible. So we'll hide it and turn on our backing and our glass group like that. And then we're just going to detail out our, um, let's delete our polyline uh, curve here. We just need to detail out this, um, the central spoke here and then attach our uh, tubes, right? So again, looking at um, this image, I'm gonna you can kind of see the edge of the central spoke here. And then we're going to attach our tubes. Then we'll just add this final plastic casing. It's not gonna be part of a wall. We'll just make it more like the fire alarm looking thing. Okay, so let me just hide everything but the center spoke here. Um, and then, yeah, we'll get going on it here. So let's see, what should we do? Let's, uh, first of all, let's hollow it out. So I'm just gonna look at it on X and I'm going to um, create a circle here. Just click and drag. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it, something like that. Enter, the circle selected. So I'm just gonna press C for cut. Select my solid, it's gonna cut it, hit okay. I'm gonna delete that um, uh, middle solid there. And I'm gonna delete that circle we just used like that. So we have more of a ring. And then I'm going to select the two edges. I think I'm gonna chamfer these like that. Okay. And then I think there's probably about, you know, if there's four of these in this one third section, I'm gonna say there's 12, um, four times three, 12 uh, spokes coming out, 12 test tubes all together. So let's make a, let's cut some holes in this bad boy. So let's look at it from the side here. Okay, I'm gonna draw a cylinder um, on the side of this guy. Now, something's jumping out at me here. This doesn't look like it's centered and this may have been a result of our thickening this thing. So let's make sure our um, ring here is actually centered. There is no like center command that I know of. Uh, I'm just pressing uh, G for move, and I'm going to turn on um, grid snapping. Let me just snap that, make sure that's actually snapped to the x-axis there. That should be centered now. We turn off uh, grid snapping and um, enter to commit that. Let me just take a look at our metal backing here. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, so it looks like I had somehow got that offset a little bit, but I've got it back in the middle now. So let's go to the side and um, go to our cylinder. And now uh, the center is actually the center. <laughs> let's just drag out our cylinder a little bit. So it's not, not super close to the edges there, something like this, we're gonna to have to probably adjust the size a little bit. Now it's gonna go default to like a subtraction operation, creating the cylinder, it sees the other solid there, it's just asking me, do I wanna subtract from it? And I don't, um, I just want a new body, so I'm gonna press B, and then I'm just gonna adjust my uh, tool handles here, kinda of just squish it down, we're gonna hit enter, and then G to move, and we're gonna move it back into position, so something like this. And then we're going to do an array around the around the uh, twelve of them, and then we're going to we're going to cut holes into our ring. So that looks good. Let's press the radial array and click in the middle here, and we want um, twelve. So we just need twelve here. Just want to make sure they're not intersecting on the edges. Looks like 
They might be on the inner edges, so let's just Control Z, undo that, S for scale, make this a little bit smaller, hit OK. And then again, uh, let's do an array from the center. Boom. We've got 12 of them. I think, I think this will be OK. Maybe just a little bit. No, I think it'll be OK. I think it'll be OK. Uh, just like that, we just don't want it. We just don't want them to intersect in the middle. So when I um, do a, a Boolean subtraction operation, I want to select my spike center first. That's what I'm going to chop into, and I'm going to hit con press Control, and I'm just going to select all these cylinders around the edges here, like this. I'm going to press Q to activate the Boolean tool. You see, it's now it's it's cutting into it, and yeah, it is. It, that's what I was afraid of. It was, it is like they're still just a little too big. I don't I don't want them connect touching down there. So let me just press Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Let me just Control Z all the way back and S for scale and just again a tad smaller, maybe like 90%. Okay. And uh, then we'll select this guy and do our radial array one more time. Now this is again, this is like procedural modeling versus direct modeling. Direct modeling very fast, but not super flexible. We can't just um, alter the radius of the cylinder later. So now, okay, we're good. We're not getting intersections there. So select our, our, our ring and then control select all our cylinders. Q for Boolean. And you see, you know, it all appears to be working here. It defaults to subtract. Now I'm actually gonna keep, I wanna keep these cylinders. I wanna keep one of these cylinders. Um, just for uh, just for a snapping reference, but I think I need to keep them all then then do some deleting. So if you press T, keep tools, they turn to sort of pinkish, which means when I hit OK, it's not gonna delete all the cutters. It's gonna keep them in the scene. So I'm gonna hit OK. It, it made the cutting operation, but it kept my cutters, right? So I'm gonna actually, um, I wanna keep uh, this guy at the top. So I'm gonna delete these two. And then I'm going to delete um, all these guys. I'm just keeping this guy at the top. And you can see it did do the cuts. And the reason I'm keeping the guy at the top is I want to create um, sort of like these, you know, uh, feeder tubes that go, you know, from the back of the mechanism and into the test tubes, right? So I'm going to do my uh, line and I'm just going to snap to the top of this guy and navigate to the bottom and snap to the bottom like that. And then um, looking at the side, I'm just gonna go straight out like this. And, and that's why I wanted to keep that cylinder there, just so I could snap to it like that. And now I can select my cylinder and delete it and select this vertice right here, press B for the fillet and just nice and round off that, you know, make it nice and rounded like so. And now I've got this sort of like feeder tube in here, right? And so I'm going to, um, let's bring back our, uh, our metal backing like this and our lights. Okay. Let me just select my, um, spike center here and select my polyline. I'm just press G. I'm going to move them both forward just a little bit. I just don't want any intersection at the back here like this. You look at it from the top, it's you can see what I'm doing. I just don't want it to intersect like that. I want it to be like like this. And yeah, I think that's that's good. And we can have that tube kind of go through the back there. Okay. Okay. And then I'm gonna grab my um my polyline here and I'm gonna press P for the pipe tool, which is also an icon down here, right here at the very end, P for pipe. So press P and then just it's gonna create just a nice like smooth pipe there by default. We don't need to really change anything. So I'm just going to actually, this may actually give me, yeah, let's do a little thickness here. So I'm gonna drag out my thickness and it's gonna make it a tube instead of a solid. So just like that, instead of 0.01, like 0.03 maybe, something like this. So now I've got a nice um, tube there. Pretty sweet. We'll, we'll, we'll fix that in a minute. So something like this, enter. And we'll give this tube like a nice, like sort of like a, you know, sort of a translucent look when we do the rendering, something like this. And then our, our test tube's gonna sit on that. So like um, each of these tubes, like what is gonna go into the tube and into the test tube, 
which then they make a grenade out of in Death Stranding. If you if you think that sounds weird, Death Stranding is a really weird game. Uh, I suggest you I suggest uh, I suggest you play it. It's an awesome game. So I, this whole tutorial probably sounds really weird. Uh, I don't need this polyline anymore. I am going to select this here, and I'll just call this um, let's call it tubing or tube. Double click. I really don't like the double click rename. I, the enter rename is, is way better. So we'll just double click tube. And then again, we're just gonna duplicate this um, the same way with the radial array. So click on that, click in the center, and they should all just pop through perfectly since we had it aligned for the first one. Looks pretty cool, enter. And then, yeah, the center piece here, um, the center piece of our glass wedging. We've got all of them here. Where is it? This right here. We'll just drag it to the top. I drag it to the top, drag it to the second to the top, then drag one below. This guy, we'll just call it, um, uh, whoops, can't enter, just double click, um, glass circle, we'll call it. Um, yeah, let's do a little bit of chop chop on it. So we'll just look at it from the front and just create a, a circle curve here, just uh, about the width of our push in, just about the center of our uh, ring here like that, enter. C for cut, select that um, that piece behind it, hit OK. And then that new solid here, we can just delete, get rid of, get rid of that circle we just used. Let me just look at it from the side so you can see it. Get rid of that circle we just used to cut. And now we've got um, a hole through that. And let's, again, whoops, undo. Let me just keep the circle. We're gonna cut through the backing as well. So the circle is selected. So just press uh, C for cut. We're gonna select the backing here like that. Hit OK, and then that that solid that's that's automatically selected. We're just going to delete it, and so now we've got that hole in the backing as well. So yeah, looks good. Okay, there's our our blood tubes coming out of the back. I don't know that we need to do much else with it. It just kind of looks cool in the middle there, like that. Um, yeah, and then let's. What else do we have to do? Let's turn our glass casing back on. Uh, oh, it is, no, it isn't really, it isn't really transparent, but yeah, so that's going to look like that. So the only thing we need to do now is get our test tubes in place, and then we need to create this sort of um, plastic housing. So let's uh, delete that circle we use for the cutting, and I should probably save this at some point here. So we'll save as, we'll call this, um, whatever, Death Stranding Part until I come up with a better name for it. And yeah, so let's let's go back and get our uh, test tubes placed and sort of probably scaled in the right, um, uh, the right size. So now in plasticity, you can't have um, solids that aren't like touching or intersecting um, as one item, right? So if this was like Moto or Maya or Blender, um, I could have all these different all these different tubes, I could just combine them into one like mesh item uh, and they'll all be just separate polygon islands, but that's not really, oh no, are those intersecting? Oh, they are just a little bit. I need to make those a little bit smaller. Um, you would normally, you know, you have different polygon islands within one mesh item and we can merge them together once we get back to Moto, but for now, we're gonna keep them separate. I'm just gonna delete those. I need to make my tube just a little bit skinnier so it doesn't intersect with each other. So maybe just um, select that outside surface. Here, hold shift, hold shift. And so we have all, all three of these little segments and, and push in just a little bit. So it's a nice um, thin tube there. And then press four, select the body, and then let's just do a radial array again and put them back in there. This time they're not intersecting. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, glad I caught that. Okay, control G group, and we'll call this um, tubes group. And we shall move on. So, okay, so I'm gonna wanna like stick my test tube right at the top of this one and then just replicate them all around. And so there's a, there's a tool for that. And the first thing I need to do is place my grid in a better position, right? I don't know that I can, I'm not sure it's gonna let me snap to the center of this, this hollow tube right here. It might, but what I can do is with, with this face selected, if I just press the space bar, it's going to move the grid 
to that plane. Now I hold Alt, you can see the grid now is in the center of that tube, right? And you can see up here it says temporary construction plane. Now if I press X, it just goes back to where it normally is. But I can, I can place this plane anywhere. I can select a face and then hit, hit the space bar. Now that plane is on the face, right? The grid is on the face, the temporary construction plane. I want it on this face up here. So I'm gonna hit space and have it up there. And I'll, I'll put it back to where I want it in a second. But I'm gonna turn on my test tube group here. And I'm gonna select all three of them. One, two, three, all three, so I'm sorry, not faces. I want all three solids. One, two, three, all three solids. And then I'm going to use this tool down here. If you click and hold on the, on the duplicate tools, we have a duplicate object, we have alternative du duplicate, and we have place solid or curve. This will duplicate this, these three things I'm, I've selected and allow me to snap it to that part of the grid. So I select that. You get this little blue um, tool handle. And the first thing I want to do is, is select the pivot of these items that I'm placing. So I want to place and want to stick this part to this part, right? So I need to select this first. It just, it's going to snap to the middle here. I'm going to stick this part, click, to this part. And you notice it's um, flipped. If I just sort of navigate over here, you can see these keyboard shortcuts. There's an F for flip, so I can press F for flip. And then again, just right here on the grid, and I can um, click, and there you go. Hit enter to commit, and there it is. Now I, I could do a whole bunch of them if I want, but I just want that first one. I'm just gonna hit escape to drop everything. So I can delete my original test tube here. Just select those and delete it. I'm just gonna rename these really, really quick. This is a metal ring. And then we've got um, test tube. And then we've got uh, test tube cap. And we'll just select all three of these and group them. And then I'm going to do a radial array on all of these guys, right? So we'll just put it on everything. So we'll do, we might need to actually press S and scale this just a little bit. It's actually, oh, and don't forget to um, put our construction plane back to where, where it goes in the middle there. And so we'll select all three of these. I think now Moto has action centers where you can just, um, you know, you can get the tool handles wherever you want them, action axes where you can move you know, the tool handle, orient the tool handle wherever you want it. Moto is like the best in, in the business for that. There's just no question. We do have this, um, you know, axis, uh, you know, this pivot um, button here. If you press V, and it'll just sort of snap to where I want it. So I can go to scale. So let me just hit escape, press scale, right? So I got my scale tools way up here, but I wanna zoom in here and kind of see what's going on. So I can press V and then I can snap my scale tools down in the middle here. And then I can really kind of, you know, zoom in close and, and it's not as good as action centers, but it's, it's pretty damn close. I just, again, I just want it just a little, little bit bigger than a tube, just like that. Okay, looking good, all right. And then again, I just need to um, uh, group these guys and we'll just call it a test tube group. And then I'm gonna select all three of these. Um, select my radial array, look at it from the front, click in the middle and I'm offset somewhere. I must have somehow offset my tubes when I first, um, the second time I did the array. Okay, no problem, hit okay. Let's uh, grab all the tubes but the top one. Delete, grab that top tube, array, and boom. Okay, we're good. All set there. Okay, we've got tubes going into test tubes, going through this sort of circular thing in the middle. We've got um, this glass case surrounding everything. We've got metal backing, and we've got um, that sort of glass group there. Okay, so last thing we need to do is just this uh, housing, right? Just this plastic housing here right here. And so yeah, let's just do this real quick and then uh, we'll be done. 
So before we create the case, I think I just need to create like a backend piece here real quick. Let me just turn on that um, that piece. Just just like a back piece. It looks kind of weird that they're just going through the middle here. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to um, hover over this edge right here. Press two and hover over this edge and select that edge right there. And then when I press Control D or Shift D, you see that I've made a curve, right? And then I can just hit OK and patch that curve with this icon down here and I'll patch it into a sheet. Hit OK, you see I have a sheet here now. I can delete my curve. And my sheet, I'm gonna hover over it or I'm gonna press three actually and select that um, face there. And it just um, goes to offset phase, but I'm gonna press E for extrude and just pull it out like this. Now I want a new body, I don't wanna connect it to all these tubes. So right now it's gonna do a union with all those tubes. I just want a new body. So I'm gonna do B for new body. And yeah, not quite you know, to the edge there like that and hit okay. And then two for that curve or that edge right there, press two and select that edge and just, you could chamfer or, boop or fill it, it have, whatever you wanna do, just chamfer or fill it kind of like that, okay. And then I'm going to um, drag this little material onto it, the blue material like that. And I'll rename this um, just back end, something like that. And I wanna chop the curves through, <laughs> the, chop the tubes through it. So there's a couple ways to do it. So the tubes, as you notice, are, um, are hollow. So it'll create a, like a weird, uh, uh, Boolean, right? It's just going to cut out the tube part and it's going to leave that middle piece there. So why don't I do this? I'm just going to go through each of these tubes here and I'm going to select um, the outer uh, curve or outer edge like so. Whoops. It's a little hard to select sometimes. Select it, select it, not that one. You can always undo your selection. So if you make a bad selection, you just undo it. And then uh, I just want all of these outer guys. It's probably an easier way to do this, but almost done. Two more, three more, one, two, okay, got them. And then uh, again, Shift D is gonna make a bunch of curves and then I'm gonna patch them all like that, hit okay. Now I've got a bunch of sheets. You can see all these sheets here. Um, so I'm just gonna, let me delete these curves. Let's clean it up a little bit. And this original sheet that I used to create the back end piece I don't need, so let me just delete that. And then I've got all these sheets from, um, these sheets now from the edges of the tubes. I wonder if I can, I don't think I can, so I have all these selected and uh, I believe um, Shift H will hide everything but selected. I'll just go to face mode. I just want all these faces selected here and offset, um, I don't want offset, I want uh, control two to um, convert this face selection to the circular sort of edge selection. And that changes the offset to extend. I just want them a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna extend them out a little bit. I don't want them intersecting, but just extend out a little bit like that and hit okay. And now alt H I believe will unhide everything. And here I can, let me just um, control Z that. Don't unhide everything. Let's just unhide the uh, back end here. So let's get all our sheet faces selected here. And we're going to E for extrude and just sort of push it through. We're gonna do a um, difference. So press W, now we're in difference. We still need to select the target body. So we're gonna select our back end piece like that then hit okay. And we've got a bunch of holes in it, right? So we don't need these sheets anymore. I'm gonna select them all, delete them. And I believe um, you know, that it's really thin there, but I think it's fine. Let me just do Alt H to unhide everything. Yeah, our tubes are kind of going through there now. And that just looks better from the front, right? So yeah, looks looks good. We'll just, we'll go with that. And yeah, so let's move on to sort of the final piece, just sort of the the, the casing. And I'm just gonna make a cylinder. So I'm just gonna just gonna make a cylinder. So click on the new cylinder here. Uh, make sure you're snapping to the middle. Drag out your radius, just a little bit bigger than this whole thing. And then um, let's drag out our our height here. Now we don't want to do a 
uh, Boolean operation. So again, make sure you press B for new body. Sort of, I don't know if I like it that it automatically assumes you want to do a subtraction versus a new body. Um, I guess there's no winning there. So, you know, whatever. So just, just B for new body. And we'll just adjust the um, height and radius a little bit. Just kind of eyeball it. You just want to sort of encapsulate everything we've got here. Hit enter and then G for move. And we're just going to move it, you know, to the back. Maybe just, let me just look at it from the top. Maybe just not quite to the face plate here, or the back plate, just kind of like that. And then, um, yeah, that looks good, I think. If you need to make it, um, you know, push the front out, you can just select the face and, and move it like this. So you just want to sort of, I don't know, actually, I think I like it. Um, yeah, it's got to be farther out than that blue part. So just a little bit like this. We're going to make it hollow. Uh, but first I want to select this outer ring here and just do a bit of a bit of a chamfer or a bit of a, a bit of a fillet actually, something like that. Nothing too big, something like that. Hit OK. And then I want to make it hollow. Now there's a command for this. This is kind of weird actually because, um, you know, if I select like a face or something, you see this, I'm just going to hover. There's this like hollow solid icon, but it's in face mode, so why is it letting me hollow a solid in face mode? If I pick a solid like this, I don't see that icon, which is, is, is that a bug? Seems weird to me. I've got the whole solid here selected, and then if I go over here to my uh, commands and say, you know, hollow, hollow a solid, it seems to work. I've got a little tool handle here, and if I drag it, you can see like this little um, part on the inside, sort of, um, you know, you can see like the, the inner surface of the shell that we're hollowing, it, sort of the thickness happening. So it seems to be working. So I'm going to hit OK, maybe like minus um, 0 0.003 or something like that. Hit OK. And let me just uh, call this um, casing. And then I'm going to um, Shift H to hide everything else. And just to show you that this works, let me just um, take a, a cylinder here and click here and just sort of draw through it like that. And you can see that um, that it worked, right? So we've got, let me just go to uh, ortho mode. You can see we've got this, you know, thin shell there. So it worked, it's just a little, I don't know, a little weird. I'm not sure why the icon doesn't show up. Um, Alt H to bring everything back. I don't, I'm not sure why the icon doesn't show up when you have a solid selected, but whatever. We can get to it from the commands. Maybe that's a bug. Maybe I'm just not doing something right. All right. So I think I am going to um, go back to uh, 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 Shift H hiding everything but this. We're just going to look at it from the front. And I'm going to make some curves here. I'm going to start with a circle. And we'll just do sort of a small circle in the middle like, like this maybe and enter and then we're going to do another circle and we'll make this one quite a bit bigger almost to the edge like that and then i'm going to make a straight line just starting clicking from the center and straight down boom like that and then i'm going to make another straight line from the center off to the side and then again if i start dragging up i can change the angle so you can see the um angle here at 12 13 i'm going to make it um 30. And the reason I'm doing that is it's at you know zero, but it's also think of it as 90. And if I go 30, that's like a you know 90 plus 30 is 120 degrees. That's a one third of 360. So that's like one third of the pie slice there, right? Um, at 30. So hit enter, and then with that curve selected, I'm going to Alt um, X for the mirror, and I'm going to click on this left side here to mirror that curve over there. And now I've got some, yeah, I've got some curves mirrored around and all kinds of stuff going on here, right? So what else do I need to do? I need to select the center, um, a center circle here and these three curves. And then I'm going to press O for offset. You can see I can offset the curves like this. Now it's just all going on one side. If I press tab, it's going to create an offset on both sides, which is what I want. So I want to press tab. And I'm just going to offset sort of a thickness here like this, maybe a little more like this. Hit enter. And then I'm going to go in. I'm going to delete these middle curves. Click the three middle ones that we just made. Delete them. Delete. Um, 
this middle circle like that. And then I'm gonna press the T button for trim. And I'm gonna start trimming away some of this stuff. I love the trim button. Trim away all these little curve pieces in here. Trim these away, trim these away. Trim these away, trim away that, trim away that, trim away that. Trim away these guys on the outside. Boom. And then, yeah, hit enter, okay, looks good. Now I'm gonna select these sort of four faces here, even though, again, they're not faces yet. They're just sort of pre, sort of like pre-selection of a face that doesn't exist yet. So, you know, these, these curves overlap and they create, um, we haven't created uh, faces yet, we haven't created sheets yet, but it allows us to select these overlapped parts as if those sheets exist so we can extrude them or shift D, duplicate to create those curves. And so I've got these four closed curves created. I'm gonna delete all my other curves and kind of see what I'm doing here. So now I've got these curves here, right? And then I'm gonna press uh, one for verts and I'm gonna select all these vertices and I'm gonna press uh, B and I'm going to um, fillet those out so they're nice and uh, rounded like that, okay. Now I've got these four curves here on this guy. Let me just go back to sort of. So for this one, this uh, pie segment, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to sort of pre-select the face or select the pre-existing, you know, not, not quite existing face yet, right? It's just a closed curve, so it lets me select this area that will be could be a face. And it just saves me the time of making a face. And then I've got the extrude tool pop up. So I'm going to press W for um, difference. And I'm going to select my, it's asking me for a target body. I'm going to select my casing. And I'm just going to push in like that and then hit OK. And then I'm gonna hide um, this, uh, this curve here like that. And you can see I've now chopped in right there. And on these other three, I'm gonna select um, all three of these curves. So I can have these three guys selected and shift I for imprint and I select my casing to imprint on. But you'll notice I've got a little hide occlusion button here because right now it's imprinting on the back too. I can, I can Click that and it won't imprint on the back, just the front. So that's kind of nice, hit okay. And then hide these three curves and then select my three faces here. I'm going to um, offset them. So push them out a little bit and then okay. Control two to get those edges and chamfer, not chamfer, but fillet them down a bit like that. So nice and smooth, okay. And then yeah, I've got a window here and these sort of um, poofy things there. Maybe I'll just do a quick uh, quick fillet on the, this, whoops, on this back edge here as well. Okay, and then yeah, let's, um, let's just delete our curves and let's uh, Alt H to bring everything else back. We just hide this um, glass casing right here for now and you kind of see, so yeah, we've got this open window here. We've got our, um, Test tube sticking out. Let me just look at it from the front. And we've got this big case around the, on the, around the outside. If the case is too big, like I might want to just select the, uh, these test tubes a little more. So I think, I think I want to scale everything actually. I want to scale the case. I want to scale um, the glass casing. I want to scale the uh, back part as well. The metal backing and then I want to scale these glass wedges. Sorry this is probably isn't what I want to do at the very end to scale everything but let me just right click here and say um, show faces hide it so we can just kind of see everything in here. These are these guys you can sign, kind of see the edge of the um, test tubes that's where I want to be. So I'm going to press S for scale and I'm just going to move these parts in a little bit like that. Just make sure you have all those glass wedges, the metal backing, the glass casing, and then the plastic casing. Hit OK. I'm going to right click here and, and show faces again. I'll just hide my, my glass casing so we can look in and say, yeah, it's about what we, oh, I did a little too much. <laughs> Undo, scale. Hard to tell, something like maybe 0.9. That's probably too much. 0.92, like that maybe. 
0 0.92, 0 0.92. Okay, hide the glass casing. Okay, that's good. That's a little bit closer. So yeah, I think that's. I think that's it. We can um, export this now, bring it into Moto, rig it up to spin around, I suppose, and um, do some materials on it. So I'm going to turn my glass casing back on, save, and then when you export these guys, I'll just make sure I don't have any sheets or um, rings left, or sheets or curves left over. I don't. Yeah, so let's just say file, export, uh, let's do an OBJ. We'll call this um, Death Stranding thing. Part OBJ. Save. And then I'm going to go with Ingons and I'm going to crank up my um, density a little bit, maybe 0.75. Something like that. Not crazy, but. Kind of see the tubes in here. That looks pretty good, I think. Maybe 0.8. Hit OK. Here it is in Moto. Uh, just put some basic materials on it real quick and um, did some quick parenting. Uh, for the blood, I just took the interior polygons of the tubes and flipped them and capped them and scaled them in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you can see how it works. Like the, you can spin the uh, spinner around here with all the, the tubes and stuff. Um, let me just hide the, the uh, uh, case here. Here's that glass casing. I don't know if this is super um, necessary or not. You know, maybe maybe it should just be open. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. Let me just hide the casing. You can see all the you know the meshing came in pretty well from. Um, from plasticity, I kept these guys empty. And the idea is, yeah, they just kind of spin around here like that. Oh, here it is in Octane with some, and Moto with some uh, materials on there. And it looks, you know, it's kind of like the one in the game. The one, the thing I, I'm not sure about is, um, I just sort of push in here a little bit, is the uh, sort of glass case I put on the front. So there's this sort of, um, if I just isolate it here, this sort of glass, circular glass case, if you remember, that kind of goes over everything. You know, when it's off, the it's just a lot clearer what's going on in there. It's a little bit cooler looking. In fact, if I turn, let's just sort of take everything off from the back. Um, take off the frosted glass. So there's the metal backing. In fact, let's take that off. And you can kind of see what we've got here. Let me just hide the wall too, maybe. So there's the back, right? Looks pretty cool. Actually, this is this part looks pretty sweet, I gotta admit. But just kind of bland and smoke detectory looking when you get into it a little too much. Let me just put this back here. Um, but yeah, if we start to build it up, we, we put the wall behind it and then um, the metal backing. And then there's actually, uh, there's the glass um, the sort of frosted glass here. So if you sort of go on the edge again here, you can see the, uh, uh, let me just refresh the Octane render here. So, you know, there's the metal backing there and there's this sort of thin layer of this frosted glass with a decal on it. And the only thing I did in Moto is I made this um, sort of light ring on the inside of it. And this is just just this little ring here that's just lays between that metal backing and the frosted glass. And it has a uh, vertex map on it. And, and then the Octane override, um, if you look at the Octane shader, it uses this uh, vertex um, map for texture emission. So the the uh, full weight is the is the texture emission, right? So it's just it's just using an emissive like a diffuse material with this text the weight map on the texture emission right there, and it gives it that sort of um, you know glowing light behind it look, which which kind of sells the whole thing I think. And yeah, then we've got uh, and then like I said, there's this whole 
then there's this whole glass casing which which goes over everything which it really knocks the um the vibrancy of the blood down a lot like there's the blood with no glass on top and there's the glass on top and it's just i don't know and then yeah i gotta admit the smoke detector chassis is kind of boring looking but this is probably a little <laughs> a little more than i would say we need for the um kit bash section like the kit bash stuff i was thinking more like star wars kit bash like little like little mechanical things and greebles and spaceship parts and droid parts things like that but you know i'll throw this in there to get started and then oh there is a plasticity discount if you want to buy plasticity you can get a 10 percent discount um, by using pixel fondue as the discount code i'll put that in the description and i'll put that on um, the twitter pin tweet and, and other places as well so okay all right thanks for watching yum yum